I'm using an external webcam today um, because I feel like uh, it's like a little bit of a clearer picture, like a little less grainy, but um, I also feel like I look really bad. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see. We'll try it this way and see how it goes. Sorry for the glare off my glasses. As always, I'm just too lazy to put in my contacts today. And honestly, I wasn't actually planning to do this video today, but then I had time, so I thought I would do it. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about useful delusions, the power and paradox of the self-deceiving brain, and then we'll also talk about um, the books I haven't finished yet and which one I should pick up again next. Um, so this is book number 61 on uh, the challenges. Oh, fun. Like, <laughs> changes the light. Um, on the challenges, uh, on my, my Goodread challenges, I, 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 if you saw my last short video, I met my goal of 60 books. And I was reading this one, stopped to read the Card Captor Sacra, and then just finished this one. It's not very long. Um, it's a pretty quick read, and most of the last bit is notes and annotations and things. But um, it's written by... Uh, I'm not even going to try and say it. <laughs> um, but he hosts Hidden Brain. If you ever listen to that podcast, um, I used to listen to it a lot back when I had more time for podcasts. Now I mostly listen to No Such Thing as a Fish, which I highly recommend if you like random trivia and British humor. It's a great mixture of those things. Um, but this book. <laughs> uh, so... I like psychology books and I also just needed a palate cleanser from um, the fiction I'd been reading and been, if you saw the last couple of videos, I was a little bit disappointed in the last couple of books I read. And this book, I have fewer expectations for nonfiction because, I don't know, nonfiction is just nonfiction. Um, and so this one, I gave it four stars uh, on Goodreads um, because it's just, it's quick read, it's... Uh, well written, well, like it's, it's the, you know, it's, it's engagingly written. It doesn't require a lot of effort on the part of the reader, uh, so long as you're interested in the subject matter. And, um, it's basically about how our, our genetic makeup, our psychology, um, or like our survival benefits as a species benefits from us tricking ourselves into believing some things um and it just talked the sun came out <laughs> oh my gosh look at the light i'm like almost out okay this is what happens when you're you've got natural light i need a ring light is what i need but um it's on my wish list somebody uh so yeah so um like and you know obviously a lot of people won't love uh, towards the end, he talks a little bit about religion and and other ways that we organize organize our thoughts and beliefs and find you know like conspiracy theory type stuff where we um, <clears throat> we uh, like how we benefit from that or in what ways psychologically um, and then he doesn't really talk he doesn't go in depth on like solutions for talking people out of these beliefs but I mean he points out quite accurately that rational thinking is not the answer to changing someone's mind when they have strongly held beliefs which is true um so oh my god I'm sorry you guys I will figure out the whole lighting thing I promise um we it's just like watching some kind of weird experimental movie now. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's like cloud. It's like partly cloudy today, and the sun keeps like going in and out of the clouds. And I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna change my shutters. I have no idea if this is gonna work any better. I guess we'll see. Anyway, bottom line is it was a relatively quick and painless read. Um. He talks about the Church of Love, which I had never heard of. It was a really interesting story uh, about a, a scam in which this guy mailed letters pretending to be all these different women to kind of a Lonely Hearts group of men and created these correspondences. And um, 
got the men to send money to the women they thought they were writing with, and how when the perpetrator went to trial, a lot of these men testified in his defense, like saying how the letters from these fictitious women had actually changed their lives for the better and things like that. It's it's kind of an interesting story. I had never heard it. It's It's gone into some depth in this book. Um, it's kind of, I would say, one of the centerpieces of the book and um, definitely uh, an interesting little bit of a read. Anyway, um, so that's that. Like I said, I gave it four stars on Goodreads. Uh, again, it's like three and a half, but I rounded up. Um, unlike the last couple books where it was like three and a half, but I rounded down. Uh, so I guess I'm in a three and a half zone at the moment. Um, okay, I have a stack of books that I have been working on almost since the beginning of the year. And so I need to know <laughs> which book you think I should try to f at least finish next. Here they are. Just the ones in Future King. I am this far in. Um, so I could keep working on that. 88 Names, which I've actually really been enjoying. It's kind of like lit RPG-esque. Um, I haven't gotten very far though. I don't know if you can see. See, uh, that's a downside too with this camera. It's like it's clear. Oh, well, actually it was clear, but now I look fuzzy again. So I've only gotten about this far. Um, so I'm inclined to finish that next. What is with the focus now? happening here I don't know I give up I gotta get like a better camera I guess like you would think brand new laptop should have a fantastic webcam does not I don't I don't know why um I've also only gotten about that far in history has is all you left me um, I was enjoying the current day present kind of storyline but the flashbacks were not holding my interest um i find the main character kind of just i don't like him so you know <laughs> i'm waiting to like him i don't know and of course a conjuring of light still working on this bad boy like you know uh just shy of halfway through it this was the first book i picked up this year and like I read the other two in the series like ages ago and I liked I loved the first one did not enjoy the second one this one is better than the second but not as good as the first so far in my opinion and I just don't know like I don't know why I don't feel the drive to to finish the series and see what happened to these people other books that I had started but did not finish yet um, the last Trials of Apollo book by Rick Reardon. Um, I started reading it. Was it the Tower of Nero or whatever? And then my youngest son took it away. And I, he's finished it, but I don't actually know where the book is right now. <laughs> so I don't. I'm looking for the copy. I gotta go dig through his room and find it, I guess. Um, and the other two kids are gonna fight me for it. Um, and the India fan by Victoria Holt. I started rereading and have not finished the reread on that. So let me know in the comments which of these books you think I should finish first um, as I try to round out my year. I'm trying not to pick up anything new because I've got all these like partially started books and I just need to finish at least maybe one or two of them to feel good about myself again. <laughs> Okay, uh, if you haven't pre-ordered The Ghosts of Marshley Park, please do that. There are supply chain disruptions and um, that means that uh, it takes longer for books to get printed and shipped right now. Um, so if you want it day of or nearly day of release, which is October 19th, you're going to want to pre-order it um, to make sure you get a copy sooner rather than later. That's it. Take care. I will try and figure out this whole lighting camera thing, I promise. 
So sorry for all the whatever. 